like to welcome everybody here this Christmas Eve service. Uh, glad so many of you could make it with this weather. Didn't think we'd see so many people out and welcome to everybody that's watching online. We hope that we have a blessed service today. Thank you. share with you an old, old story. It's a story of love, of sacrifice, of mystery. It's a story about bravery and death and about conquering evil. It's about joy, a baby, and even some angels. This story, God's story, reminds us that Christ brings us the hope that there is more to life than this world. It reminds us that Christ will give us a peace that defies all human reason, that God's love is unconditional and eternal, and that the joy God offers is indescribable. This story has all the makings of great fiction, but it's not fiction, it's all true. The most amazing story ever told is not the result of human imagination, but rather the result of divine inspiration and intervention. Maybe you've heard this story before. Maybe you've heard it so many times that you know it by heart. Maybe you've heard the story before but never really understood it. And maybe you've never heard this story quite told like this. Whatever the case, tonight it is our prayer that this story will touch your heart as never before. Hell 
The only logical place to start our story is at the very beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. They will reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the wild animals on the earth, and the small animals that scurry along the ground. So God created human beings in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and govern it. Reign over the fish in the sea, the birds in the sky, and all the animals that scurry along the ground. Then God said, look, I've given you every seed-bearing plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given every green plant as food for all the wild animals, the birds in the sky, and the small animals that scurry along the ground, everything that has life. And that is what happened. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. And evening passed, and morning came, marking the sixth day. Thank you. 
In this beautiful creation, God planted a garden for the man he had created. God filled the garden with all kinds of trees that were both lovely to look at and good to eat. Four rivers ran through this garden to keep it lush and green. But God saw that everything was not yet perfect. Adam needed a companion. So God created Eve to work and live alongside him. Sometimes in the cool of the day, God walked in the garden with Adam and Eve. God loved them very much. Now in this garden, there was one, now in this garden was one tree that God commanded Adam and Eve not to eat from. But one day a serpent came to Eve. As the Bible says, the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. And the serpent tricked Eve into eating from the one tree that God had commanded them not to touch. Eve brought the fruit to Adam, and he ate too. Adam and Eve disobeyed God when they ate from that tree. Everything changed. For the first time, Adam and Eve hid from God. They knew God would be coming to walk with them in the garden, and they hid. God knew that they had sinned before he went into the garden to find them. God could have abandoned the creation that had abandoned him, but he didn't. God loved them. And so he went in search of them. There would be consequences for their actions, but only because God loved them so much. Then the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all the animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly, groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy, and in pain you will give birth. And you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree, whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle in to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grains. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. So the Lord God banished them from the Garden of Eden, and he sent Adam out to cultivate the ground from which he had been made. After this, Adam and Eve no longer walked and talked with God in the garden. God's whole creation paid the price for that one sin. Nothing would be the same again. Pain, tears, toil, frustration, fear, and separation from God. This is what sin brought to God's beautiful and perfect creation. I wonder if God cried that day when he had to banish Adam and Eve from the garden that he had made for them. God knew what this sin was going to bring, the wars, the atrocities, and the evil. But God knew something else as well. God knew how much he loved the people he had made. God loves us, the crown of creation. But God also knew the end of the story. When God spoke to the serpent that day, he was saying to Satan, you may have won this battle, but I will win the war. Today, right here, I will begin my plan to bring my people back to me. I will bring them back to my garden where the they will walk and talk with me. You have brought this sin into my creation, but I will send a savior, a Messiah, to save my people and bring them back. My plan will succeed and I will be victorious. You may strike my heel, but I will crush your head. And so the rest of God's story is the story of how God's plan unfolds one generation at a time. God promised Abraham that he would bless all the peoples of the earth through his descendants, the nation of Israel. 
During the time of Moses, God showed the Israelites again that he loved them enough to deliver them from the slavery they endured in Egypt. When they wanted kings instead of God, he gave them kings, including King David, from whom, whose line the Messiah would come. Time and time again, sin and disobedience defined God's people. God disciplined them, but he never abandoned them. God sent prophets to point the Israelites back to God and call them to repent. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us, a child is born, to us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. prophets spoke of a promise that God made thousands of years before, a promise that he made to Adam, to Eve, and to Satan. God promised to bring his people back to him. God made promises to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to Ruth, to David, whose father was Jesse, and to countless other descendants of Abraham. The Messiah, the Savior, would come from their line. He would be part of their family tree. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. Jacob, Jacob, he had Judah in his kin. Well, then Perez and Zerah came from Judah's woman Tamar. Perez, he brought Hezron up and then came Aram, then Amenadab. 
Rahab the Nashan, who was then the dad of Salmon, who with Rahab fathered Boaz. Ruth, she married Boaz, who had Obed, who had Jesse. Jesse, he had David, who we know as king. David, he had Solomon by dead Uriah's wife. Solomon, well, you all know him. He had good old Rehoboam, followed by Abijah, who had Asa. Asa had Jehoshaphat, had Joram, had Isaiah, who had Jotham, then Ahaz, then Hezekiah. Followed by Manasseh, who had Amon, who was a man, who was father of a good boy named Josiah. Who grandfathered Jehoiakim, who caused the Babylonian captivity, because he was a liar. Then he had Shealtiel, who begat Zerubbabel, who had Abiud, who had Eliakim. Eliakim had Azer, who had Zadok, who had Achim. Achim was the father of Eliab. Then he had Eliezer, who had Nathan, who had Jacob. Now listen very closely, I don't want to sing this twice. Jacob was the father of Joseph, husband of Mary, mother of Christ. But when the right time had came, God sent his son, born, born of the woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were saves of the law. The time had come, and now we see the next step in God's plan. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, to a village in Galilee, to a virgin Mary, named Mary. She was encouraged to be married, engaged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of King of David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. Confused and, and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of, of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Mary asked the angel, But who can this but how can this happen? I am a virgin. The angel replied, The Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will come and overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used, used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. For the word of the Lord never fail. Mary responded, I am a servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And the angel left her. So there was Mary, unmarried and pregnant. Not a good situation in that day. But her fiancé, Joseph, was a man of faith. After an angel appeared to him in a dream, he took Mary home as his wife. Soon after, the Roman government ordered a census, and Joseph and Mary were forced to make a journey. The Roman Emperor, Augustus, decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. 
all returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all the people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah of the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in snuggly strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those to whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in a manger.
After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. O Lord, what a path you have taken me on so far. That visit from the angel Gabriel telling me about this little baby. There was so much to take in and so much to think about and do. And now, here I am in this stable with Joseph and a baby. This little baby. What am I to think of him? He is mine, but he is yours. He looks like any other baby, but yet he isn't like any other baby. The shepherds spoke of the angels that came to tell them the news. They were amazed, and I know that feeling. Everyone who hears about this baby is amazed, but do they really understand who he is? Do I really understand who he is and what he has come here to do? Lord, show me how to be a mother to this child. Show me what you want me to teach him. Show me how to encourage him when he is discouraged. Help me to know what to say to him when he feels alone and scared. Show me what I should protect him from, as if I could protect the Son of God. O oh, child, what will your life be like? How does the Son of God live here on earth? What will you do? Where will you go? What will you teach me? What will you teach us all? I don't really know or understand what God's plan is, but I will be your mother. I will do my best. For some reason, God chose me. He chose Joseph, this stable. He chose this time. I don't know why, but I guess that's for God to know and understand. My child, I want you to know that I will love you forever. Your father and I believe in God and we believe in you. I have no idea what our future holds. I have no idea what your future will be. But we will trust God, your heavenly father, to know what is best for us. Now, close your eyes and go to sleep, my child. I am here and God is with us. You are safe. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the reign of King Herod. About that time, some wise men from eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we have come to worship him. 
King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. He called a meeting of the leading priests and teachers of religious law and asked, where is the Messiah supposed to be born? In Bethlehem, in Judea, they said, for this is what the prophet wrote. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are not least among the ruling cities of Judah, for a ruler will come from you who will be the shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod called for a private meeting with the wise men, and he learned from them the time when the star first appeared. Then he told them, Go to Bethlehem and search carefully for the child, and when you find him, come back and tell me, so that I can go and worship him too. After this interview, the wise men went their way, and the star they had seen in the east guided them to Bethlehem. It went ahead of them and stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasure chests and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. When it was time to leave, they returned to their own country by another route, for God had warned them in a dream not to return to Herod. Takes away our 
You see, the story doesn't end with the baby in the manger. His birth was monumental, but it wasn't the end. With his birth, God came to earth to continue his plan to bring us back to him. In that plan, this baby, God himself, would grow up to be a man. He would teach people, by word and by example, about what the kingdom of God is like and how people can enter it. He would send his followers out to spread the word in Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the world. And he would be accused, arrested, and sentenced to death. A perfect human. <coughs> A human who had committed no sin. <coughs> Excuse me. This human, Jesus, went willingly to his death because he knew it was his father's plan. <coughs> Pardon me. This human, Jesus, went willingly to his death because he knew it was his father's plan. He was beaten and hung on a cross. He prepared to die. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked it 
soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Did you hear that? Jesus said, it is finished. God's plan was accomplished. Jesus died on that cross, paying for our sin. But then three days later, he rose from the dead. He conquered death and made a way for his beloved people to come back to him. If we believe in Jesus, it is as if we have never sinned. We can now walk and talk with God. The garden has been opened again. We can be reunited with God through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The choice is now up to us. If we choose to ask Jesus to forgive our sins, to return to God, to his garden, that choice brings us the greatest joy ever imagined an eternal, all-surpassing joy. God created us. We turned our back on him, and he had a plan to bring us back. It was a very costly plan, but it was a victorious plan. It was a plan to bring us joy, and that's what we celebrate today.
If you don't know this joy yet, or if you're still trying to figure out how it can come to you, we hope you'll talk with someone who knows Jesus Christ and knows the joy that he can bring. Don't let this Christmas go by without listening to God's call. God is waiting for you. He's searching for you, just like he searched for Adam and Eve in the garden. God loves you, and he wants you to come back to him. Let's stand and close in prayer. Join me in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this candlelight service, time where we can reflect on why you came to this world and stories that people have told about this coming and that we could sing as well. We hope that everybody goes home tonight, reflects on that, and that everybody can have the peace and joy and blessings of the Christmas season. Amen. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope, and being filled with hope, may your light shine to the world.